Uh, when I say record setting, I mean this is the biggest movie in the 108 year history of film in the United States. Uh, it will be the biggest, this weekend will be the biggest box office ever. Last night, Thursday, was the biggest box office ever. It is a true testimony to what great filmmakers and business people they have at Walt Disney Studios. Their chairman and president, Alan Horn and Alan Bergman, make and market incredible movies. Think about this. Of the 12 biggest movies of all time for their opening weekends, Disney has 11 of the 12, and Avengers Endgame is setting a new mark by a wide margin. We've got 10 million seats at AMC set aside just this weekend uh, for Avengers Endgame. I wonder how much popcorn that means. Uh, Adam, what are some of the factors that make this film so successful for movie theaters specifically? I mean, one of the obvious ones, of course, uh, is its action content, which makes people want to come to the movie theater rather than wait for, for watching at home. What else? Are there any other things you can point to? It, it seems like quite a long movie. Uh, it's uh, three hours and two minutes, but three hours and two minutes of pure joy. A um, little weeping, maybe, but uh, people are having a great time. You know, uh, Disney has great storytellers, but every studio uh, in Hollywood these days has great storytellers. In 2018, it was a record year for Hollywood, a record year for AMC. As we look at Avengers Endgame in particular, I, I think one of the reasons it's so wildly anticipated by moviegoers is the Marvel Universe has been around now for since really 2012. Uh, and there's been movie after movie and character after character, and they've been woven together uh, into this very important uh, offering, uh, which really talks to all these characters in ways that clearly are resonating with moviegoers. Uh, last night was the busiest we've ever seen. This weekend will be the busiest we'll ever, we, we've ever seen. We may top it. I wouldn't be surprised if Lion King tops it just a couple months from now. When we look at the slate of movies that are coming out this year, it's really staggering. Uh, I, I think we're about to enter a nine-month period, which will be the biggest nine months in the history of cinema. Well, that's, that's sort of where I wanted to go, Adam, which is just how much of anom an anomaly is this right now compared to what you're seeing broader at the box office in the U.S.? Well, we've been saying for some time that 2019 is uh, going to be a staggering year for the success of the box office. Uh, the year started out slowly, but last year started out slowly. People don't remember that in 2018, the box office was down 2.5% through mid-April. And then Avengers Infinity War opened, and the year ended up, 2018, uh, up 8%, and it was the biggest box office year in movie history. Here we go in 2019, the year started out slowly. We all knew it was going to start out slowly. And then we have the biggest movie of all time at Avengers Endgame, and there are so many amazing movies coming out. Uh, excuse the list, but Disney's got Lion King and Toy mm -hmm. Story 4 and Frozen 2 and Star Wars. Universal's got The Secret Life of Pets 2 and Hobbs and Shaw and the Fast and Furious series. Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers has It 2, the wildly successful movie, a uh, horror movie from last September, as well as Joker, the backstory of the Batman character. Sony's mm -hmm. got a Spider-Man coming out. Paramount's got uh, Rocket Man, the bio of Elton John. I mean, it's just an but, amazing slate for the rest of the year. I actually think this uh, could be the first year in history when the box office crosses $12 billion domestically. And we won't uh, know until the end of the year, but the next nine months are going to be huge. Adam, I wanted to ask a, a different question very quickly. What did you make of the story that, that Netflix uh, may buy its own movie theater. Is that something that they shouldn't need to do and they could just work with you guys a, a little bit more friendly? Well, you know, I've said on your program even that we'd be happy to show Netflix movies at AMC theaters uh, if they uh, adhere to industry standards about when movies play where. But, you know, on the biggest movie-going weekend in history, this is not a weekend that I'm particularly worried about Netflix. Uh, you know, the Avengers Endgame is a reminder that people do want to see movies in theaters on the big screen. And that's not just an American phenomenon. 
AMC is also the largest exhibitor in Europe. I'm here in London now and went to see the opening of Avengers in London last mm -hmm. night. AMC is actually in 15 countries, and last night Avengers Endgame set an all-time record for the biggest opening night in all 15 countries in the U.S., Europe, and the Middle East. Uh, the movies are booming. The record year in 18, it's going to be a great year in 19. Netflix was around in 2018. Netflix was around last night when Avengers Endgame opened. Uh, and we're very confident that we can live harmoniously in a world where movie theaters does well, where streamers do well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the appetite for content among consumers literally the world over is big enough for all of us.